talking about their harrowing experience with a pickup artist. Here we go. A, a young male in his 20s approached me and with like a, this sense of urgency, he was like, I need to talk to you. I need to, I can't give up this opportunity. You're so beautiful. I just have to tell you. And like already I was just like, okay, this is a lot. Okay. Okay. This is a lot, right? Translation. I wasn't ready for this approach. You took me by surprise. Not against the law, people. Newsflash, women, you're not always going to see it coming. Just because a guy approaches you and you don't see it coming, that's not against the law. When she says, okay, this is a lot, that means you took me by surprise. Now, she wants us to believe that she didn't want this. She wants us to believe that she didn't want to really talk to this guy. But instead of saying, quote, I didn't want this, she could have told us, listen, man, the guy approached me. I didn't want to talk to him. No, what she said was, quote, this is a lot. That's not definitive, gentlemen. She never said, I don't want this. So again, this is female, this is female rhetoric trying to hide the truth in between a lie. Okay, this is a lot. She wants us to believe that she didn't really want this to happen. But instead of being definitive, she says, okay, this is a lot. And then he started with a series of questions. He was like, what's your name? What's your major? What's your nationality? Where are you going? Can okay. What's your name? What's your major? What's your nationality? All normal questions for a man to ask a female that he meets on a college campus. Dude, you're a pretty girl on a college campus. Boiled nappies evacuate says she's not so beautiful. He lied. Yeah. Come on, boiled nappies. Don't be meathead red pill guy. Look, look at her. She's hot. Every one of us in here would bang this chick. Don't be meathead red pill guy and say, well, she's not that hot. Listen, I know we get pissed off at girls like this who are on their high horse. How dare he approach me and not be attractive enough? Supremely Sublime says she's feeling herself. Yeah, she's feeling herself correctly. She's hot. I don't know what her body looks like, but I don't know. She looks like about an eight out of ten, eight and a half. Let's not sit here and pretend that this woman is not attractive. Just because you're pissed off about her, just because you're pissed off, at this kind of nonsense doesn't mean that we have to lie about our attractiveness. Let's continue. Come with you, or can you come with me off of campus? Come with me off of campus. Bullshit. That's not what he said. Not what he said. He probably asked her to coffee or something, but he didn't say, come with me off campus. The reason Miss Comlos used this language was to connote kidnapping. Come with me off campus sounds like, come with me off campus so I can kidnap you. She's acting like this is the movie Taken or something. Come with me off campus. Come with, come with me to this ominous building. And she may as well said, he said, come with me to this, to this, to this, uh, to this warehouse on the outskirts of town, this ominous warehouse. He didn't say, come with me off campus. He said, he probably asked you to coffee or, or asked you to meet up with him somewhere. Here we go. And I was already getting very uncomfortable with this. It, he was bombarding me with all these questions. And I kept saying, no, like... Okay, it kind of, listen, correct me if I'm wrong, guys. It kind of looks like she's turned on here, right? I'm going to rewind it just a little bit. Watch her face as she's describing this. You can even see it now. There's not a look of disgust on her face. I'm going to rewind this. Oh, no, just watch. Barding you with all these questions, and I kept saying no. Like, Does this look like a woman who is describing an unpleasant experience? Look at the twinkle in her eye. We're not going to come with Look, look, dude, she's smiling, the twinkle in her eye. It's like, it's almost as though she's recalling a pleasant experience. Look at her face. Look at her face. This is not an encounter that disgusted her. Not coming with you, no, like I'm not telling you my name. I call bullshit. I call bullshit on, I, I, I'm not telling you my name. I think she told him her name, but his thirst ended up creeping her out. And at that point, she decided she didn't want to fuck him. Okay? You don't, listen, you don't say, quote, I'm not telling you my name. You don't have to tell us that. It's understood. Right? You're coming forward with this harrowing experience of felony harassment. Bitch, please. And I kept trying to leave, and he was very pushy, very aggressive, following me. Finally, I left. And he... Oh, you left? <laughs> left where? How did you leave? Where did you go? Again, this is bullshit. So he's following you, and then you just left like where did you go where did you leave to did you outrun him listen guys i'm not gonna sit here and pretend that i know what happened here because i wasn't there but i know what didn't 
And she didn't just leave. You can't just leave when someone's following you. Where did you go? And you can also tell that she's hiding something by the look on her face and her body language. Wasn't following me. Then on March. Oh, did you see that? Did you see that pause? And then he wasn't following me. Now, at this point, she's saying to herself, I hope they buy this bullshit. I'm going to replay that. Just watch the pause between this story and the next story she's about to start. You can tell. You can tell she's thinking to herself, did I perform this correctly? Are they really buying this? Just watch. Finally, I left and he wasn't following me. Then on March. Yeah, that's bullshit. Those are those. Listen, these are micro expressions that men who have a lot of experience with females pick up on immediately. She's full of shit. Already, you listen, this is bullshit. I believe that she was approached, but this is not the way this goes. 26, it happened again. Um, so what happened was a guy had approached me. Um, Already, you know this chick is hiding something. Right? In um in the uh metro, she's moving her head all around. Sweet, listen, watch. In the metro part, and oh my god, look, I'm gonna rewind this again. This is unbelievable. Look at this. Just watch. Um, it's in the metro part. She's lying. Like you can tell. Listen, man, you can tell that she is all she she knows what happened, but you can see that she is already trying to cover up the holes. In her story, she's swinging her head around and looking up as if as if to try to tell the story without making herself look bad or revealing what she doesn't want us to know. And he told complimented me. He was like, oh, my God, you're so beautiful. So normally I just turned around. And I said, thank you. Kept ah, she's turned on, gentlemen. Her vagina moved. Her vagina buzzed just a little bit. You don't tell, quote, creepy guys. Thank you when they tell you you're beautiful. It doesn't work that way. Again, her body language is trying to hide the fact that she was turned on. Okay, uh, but then he continued to follow me. He started asking me questions. Um, what's your nationality? And he kept asking, he's like, just tell me. So I looked at him and I was like, I'm Italian and Greek. And there it is. See, she's turned on guys. She's aroused. Listen, I'm going to play this again. Look at her face. Look at the sparkle and the twinkle in her eyes as she recounts his persist his his persistence. She likes persistent men as all females do, so long as he's attractive. Just just watch her face as she talks about her as she tries to fake her and her 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 incredulousness at the fact that he just kept falling. Just 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 watch her face. He started asking me questions. Um, what's your nationality? And he kept asking. He's like, just tell me. Oh so I looked God, at look him at and her. I was like, I'm Italian and Greek. And yeah, I'm Italian and Greek. Why would you tell him you're Italian and Greek? Because you're turned on, sweet cheeks. You wanted to fuck him. You were thinking about him. You then you proceeded to walk as a shit test to see, you know what? Let's find out how persistent this guy is. Remember, he persisted, he persisted through. He kept asking her, what's your nationality? Which got her to tell him that she's Italian Greek. And just proceeded to walk. Yeah, and proceeded then he's to like, walk. can I have your Facebook? What's your Facebook? And I said, I don't have social media. Like, I don't have. Okay, now look at her face, guys. Now she's turned off a little bit because he's showing thirst. Right? He tried to, listen, he tried to close her too quickly. She was aroused. She was aroused by him. There's no doubt about it. You can see it in her face. But he moved in for the kill too soon. He escalated. Listen, had he escalated properly, had his timing been better, she was his for the taking. But he pressed too hard too soon and turned her off with his thirst or his perceived thirst. This is how it is, guys. This is standard game. Facebook. Then he asked for my Instagram. I said, I don't have social media. He kept following me. I was kind of really frustrated at this point and just trying to go meet my friend. And so I had turned around and I, I said quite loudly, can, can you stop following me? Okay. Now she doesn't want anything to do with him. Okay. This isn't a shit test. This is a rejection. In the beginning, he asked her, he told her she was beautiful. Oh, so thank you. Then he was persistent, right? Use a little bit of charm. Come on, come on. Tell me. And listen, girls love playing coy. I've dated a lot of Latina girls in my life. 
And one thing that all Latina girls love for you to do is guess which country, guess what their nationality is. Are you Honduran? Are you Cuban? Are you Mexican? Are you Dominican? They love that coquettish game of cat and mouse. Let's see if he can guess my nationality. This is the kind of game he ran on this girl. She turned around and said, he, 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 I'm Italian Greek. But then he tried to close the deal too soon, right? I always give this example. Sometimes girls will use a rejection the same way they use a shit test. I have a boyfriend as a perfect example. If you approach a female and you talk, you escalate, you're sitting there talking for, I don't know, three, five, maybe 10 minutes. You say, you know what? You seem pretty cool. Here, put your number in my phone. We'll hang out. And she says, well, I have a boyfriend. That, my friends, is a shit test. At which point you should answer, well, good for you. He can be around to buy you nice things when you're not with me. Or great, I don't have to spend any money on you. Right? But if you approach a woman, hi, I'm Donovan, I have a boyfriend. That's not a shit test. That's a rejection. Which is when he did. The reaction was very overwhelming. The responses just kept coming in. This happened to me too, the exact same thing. He asked me all the same questions. He was pushy. I've heard stories like that are either identical or things that are even worse. Even worse, like OMG. Maybe he asked for your phone number twice, maybe three times. OMG, we're all in danger, rape. He asked, how many times did he ask for your phone number? Did he ask your nationality? Like these bitches are acting like these guys are walking around with rope and a fucking, <laughs> and a nondescript white van and a black bag, abducting bitches right there on campus. Look at her face. Oh my God, this was so harrowing. Oh, I can't believe it. I had Roosh on a while back and he said something that hits the nail right on the head. Bitches don't know adversity. So when something minor like this happens, they overreact. Oh, I took to social media and now she's on this interview. Oh, I just, oh, I'm gonna tell my story. Oh, please, bitch, get out of here. And I, I'm overwhelmed with the response. I just, I don't know what to say about it. This is a recurring issue and we need to talk about it. It doesn't make sense that, the more I think about it, the more I realize that it doesn't make sense that it was so normal for me to just kind of move on from that happy, having happened, for me not to go report it. Oh, for me not to go report it. Well, Ms. I don't know, four eyes and fake lashes. I know that's antiquated. If this were such an egregious, felonious crime against females, why not go to the cops? Why not report it? There are many reasons this particular chick didn't... There, there are many reasons that, that most females don't report trying to get picked up, but this chick's reason is because she was turned on for him. She was turned on by him for just a brief moment. Now, the other reason she didn't report this is because a crime did not occur. It's not against the law for men to approach females, at least not yet. That's why you didn't report it. I mean, not to have taken any other measures. You didn't take measures because there are no measures to take. Because it was like, oh, it's just another batting. Oh, ho, 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 ho. another what? With a bad person. Oh, another bad encounter with a bad person. Let me rewind that. Dude, you can tell this chick is lying. Just watch this. Watch how she looks up as she's trying to convince us that she thought this guy was a bad person and a bad encounter. Watch. Like, oh, it's just another bad encounter <laughs> with a bad person. Oh, my God. Dude, this chick's body language and the twinkle in her eyes betrays her words, man. <laughs> This ch dude, this chick wanted so badly for this dude to run solid game on her. It's coming out of her pores. Like as she tells the story, she almost looks regretful that his game was sloppy. Like, damn, had he not just been, had he just been a little less creepy, I totally would have fucked him. Totally would have fucked him. Bad person. She's always like bad person. Yeah, like a guy being a bad guy is ever a bad thing to young women. And to see that it has happened to so many people and to see Lisa's story have gone so viral and so many people who had messaged her, I think it's important to share my message, to share my story and to say <laughs> that it's, it's, it's problematic and it needs, there needs to be something. <laughs> I mean, dude, this chick doesn't believe a goddamn thing she just said. Uh, well, something, uh, something, something needs to be done about it. Yeah, she's right. Something does need to be done, does need to be done. Dude needs to go to DonovanSharp.com or GoldmanUnleashed.com and learn how to close these sluts out here. I've got Goldman Unleashed on the other side of the break. I've got one more video to play you guys. Another short video. I'm going to break this down. Listen, different girl talking about the same thing, 
We're going to break this down quickly. Check it out. This is Valerie. Another man approached me. He said the exact same opening sentence really? as the other man. Yeah. Hey, everybody. Alex Muffy reporting with MTL Blog. I'm coming to you from just outside McGill University, downtown Montreal, where, along with Concordia University, there have been a recent string of harassment allegations that stretch as far back as September of 2018. Now, this all started after a student from Concordia University, Lisa Comos, uploaded a video talking about her experience. And by the way, this guy, listen, this guy has the looks to get laid, but he ain't getting laid. Like, oh, there's been a string of blah, blah. Dude, get out of here with that, dude. Of getting harassed on Concordia's campus, onto Instagram and Facebook. It went viral. Lots of people saw it. Oh, it went, oh, 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 it went viral, so it must be true, right? And uh, now a second student, Vivica Lee, talked about her experience. So I'm going to meet up with her to find out exactly what happened and uh, get an idea of what exactly, what kind of harassment is going down on these campuses. All right, so I'm here with Vivica Lee who uh, is a student at McGill. And uh, well, why don't you just tell, tell your story, what happened? Okay, so this the first instance happened in September. Um, this was at the Eden Center. I was leaving and a man approached me. First he starts saying, hey, I know this sounds really weird, but I just want to tell you how beautiful you are. And then he asked me questions like, where are you from? What do you study? Um, All normal questions. Where are you from? What do you study? This is normal conversation fodder, guys. After that, he asked me, do you want to go for coffee? And I was like, no. And he asked me, do you want to, can I have your number? Can I have your Snapchat? Oh, bullshit alert. Eh, eh, eh. Gentlemen, she didn't just say no when he asked her to coffee. She shit tested him. Again, I don't know how she did it because I wasn't there, but she did not tell him no in a way that made it clear to him that she wasn't interested. Guys, these dudes are pickup artists. They pick up artists, season pick up artists, like the one I'm going to have, come on here in just a few minutes, Goldman Unleashed. They know the difference between a hard rejection and a shit test. I just talked about it. I have a boyfriend two seconds into pick up, that's a rejection. I have a boyfriend 15 minutes into a set, that's a shit test. Valerie didn't tell him, quote, no. She probably smiled and said, I have to go to class, which then prompted him to say, well, then give me your number and we'll hang out later. This is why we know she's full of shit, guys. She didn't just tell him no. Her story, her story is poking holes in itself. Anybody who knows how to run standard pickup game knows this girl is bullshitting us. Meet up later, and like, I just left and it was fine. Like I didn't... Oh, I uh, just uh, left and now my hands are going to be busy. See, look, listen, see her face trying to hide the holes in her story. She's looking at Alex, the, the interviewer, like, uh, do, uh, do you believe that, that, that I just left? Do you believe what I said? Like I said, guys, I don't know what happened, but I know what didn't happen. And what didn't happen is what she's telling us. Too much about it, right? Too much about it. Oh, now she's looking to him to fill in the holes. Now she's looking to him to fill in the holes. Notice, here's another thing. Notice when she brushes her hair behind her ears. And Goldman, I'm gonna get to you, I'm gonna get to you in just a second. Watch this when she brushes her hair behind her ears here. I was like, no, and she asked me, do you wanna, can I have your number? Can I have your Snapchat so we can meet up later? Really? And I, like, I just left and it was fine. Like I didn't really think too much get. about it. Right there. She's either turned on by Alex here or turned on by the guy who ran game on her or maybe both. Right? Look at the eye contact they're making. Alex is like, dude, I would totally bang this chick. Look at him. Alex is like, well, listen, man, you said no to coffee to him. What about me? Either way, gentlemen, this was clearly not a bad experience to her as made obvious by her body language. Too much about it. And then two days later, I was just walking on University of Sherbrooke and another man approached me. He said the exact same opening sentence really? as the other man, yeah. And he he was just asking me questions and I didn't even stop for him. I was just walking mm -hmm. up the street, just kind of like giving him dry responses, trying to like get him to, you know. Like get it yeah, in, yeah. get it in. Exactly. Oh yeah, now listen, watch your body language now, guys. She's not, listen, she's not, pu she's not pushing her hair behind her ears anymore. Now she's telling the truth. You want to know why we know she's telling the truth, guys? Because now she knows she's being picked up. Now she knows she's being picked up. Rolo says this all the time. Girls don't want to know they're playing the game. They just want to play the game, guys. That's what they want to do. They just want to play the game. The minute something sounds rehearsed 
or canned, they are instantly turned off because it's not organic. It's not a chance meeting. It didn't just happen like it does in romantic comedy. The first guy turned her on. The second guy made the mistake of using the same lines and Valerie picked up on it. Girls aren't stupid. She knows that this dude isn't who or what he presented himself to be because he used the same lines. So now she's giving him hard nose. Low, nope, stay away. She's walking away. Guys, the moral of the story here is that girls don't want to be picked up. They want it to feel organic. They want it to feel natural. This is why guys who try PUA techniques, this is why they fail. They rehearse canned lines, pickup techniques. You know, are, 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 you know, are your jeans mirrors? Because I can see myself in them. Nobody uses that kind of stuff anymore. But this is, the, this is what girls hear when, when you sound rehearsed. I say this all the time. Girls have the internet too, guys. This is why they shit test to see if it's really you that they're talking to and not some pickup guy, not some douchebag Donovan Sharp or Goldman Unleash who uses camera to get pussy on the regular in the NYC. They know they're playing the game, guys, but they don't want to be shown they're playing the game. They just want to play. They don't want to see the man behind the curtain, guys. They just want to follow the yellow brick road. They don't want to see how the sausage is made. They just want to eat sausage. Well, both literally and figuratively. That's